Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know in order to build and publish a very simple GitHub action to the GitHub Actions Marketplace. Now we're going to be building a real world use case GitHub action that will allow us to do something called notarize our deployment artifacts. Now this action is going to take in the secrets we need in order to communicate with the VCN service which will notarize our artifacts and it'll also take in the file that we wish to notarize. Cool, so let's cover what we want this action to do. Now, imagine you have a repository and it produces some sort of output, such as a binary CLI or a Docker file. Now, your consumers may want to be able to validate that when they download this from say a website or your GitHub repository, that it hasn't been tampered with by some malicious actor. Now effectively, I want to be able to build a GitHub action that will be able to produce a checksum and store it within the code notary VCN service. And subsequently, whenever a client or customer downloads that tool, they will then be able to validate that file hasn't been tampered with by sending it to VCN through their command line tool and performing a validation on their end as well. So just to simplify what this action will do, the action is going to take in a file and some credentials. It's going to run a bash script against that file and it's then going to produce some form of output. Now this is a fairly standard um, approach for many GitHub actions. So you should be able to lift and shift this um, framework that we're building and use it for your own actions. Cool, so let's dive into Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, I've already got a GitHub repo set up called VCN Notarization Act Action. And I'm working off the YouTube branch for now, just so I can highlight to you the, the steps I followed in order to get this action up and running. Now let's start off our journey by creating a action.yaml file. Now within this, we're gonna define the inputs, the outputs, and how our action is going to be run uh, using the runs block. So let's give our action uh, a name. So VCN notarization. Let's give it a description. And we'll say an action that allows you to notarize Docker files and build artifacts using code notary VCN. Cool. So the next thing we want to define is the list of inputs. So inputs and the first what the first input is going to be the file input, which will take in either a file or a Docker file. The description for this is going to be the file or Docker file we wish to notarize. And we want to set the required flag to true. Now the next two inputs we're going to have to pass in are going to be the VCN username and the VCN password. So effectively the credentials we need to log in to the VCN command line tool. So let's see the description, the VCN username. We'll need this to be required true and VCN password description, the VCN password. And again, we'll need to set this as required true. And if we don't have the credentials or they're not correct, then we cannot notarize the file that we're passing in. Cool, so now that we've defined the list of inputs, let's now move on to the list of outputs. So outputs, and I want to output a signed hash signed hash and spell it correctly and the description for this is going to be the vcn signed hash generated from the file 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 or docker image there we go perfect cool so at this point we've defined our actions inputs and the outputs the next step we need to do is define how we wish this action to run. So I'm going to define a runs block 
I'm going to say it's running using Docker. And the image we want to use for this is the Docker file, which we'll be creating just after this. And then we want to pass in some environment variables. So in this case, we want to pass in some environment variables specific for VCN so that it can run the CLI tool. So I'm going to say VCN user is equal to inputs dot VCN username, VCN password, password is equal to inputs dot VCN password and VCN notarization, notarization password is again going to be equal to the same input inputs plural VCN password and we'll just fix this to plural as well. Cool. Cool. So you can see how we are mapping the inputs for our action into the container which our action is going to run in and this allows us to pick these things up and reference them when we're running any bash scripts or whatever within our docker file. Now the final thing we need to pass in is the list of arguments and I want to pass in the file that we're going to be passing in and to do that double space dash and I want to pass in inputs dot file like so. And finally, just for some styling changes, we're going to set the branding so we can change the color and feather icon and we can create a badge to personalize and distinguish our action. So in this case, I want branding. I want the icon to equal a check and the color is going to be blue. Cool. Now at this point, we've defined the action.yaml and everything we need for our action to run. So the input, the outputs, and how we run this. Now we referenced a Docker file in the runs section. So let's go and define that now. So I'm gonna create a new file, Docker file. And within this, we're gonna do the following. So we're gonna set the base image. So from Alpine and latest. So we just want a nice light Docker image to base our own Docker image off of. And then I want to do a couple of things. I want to run curl so that my task can access the curl command. So apk update and apk add bash. And I also want to add curl. So apk add update slash curl. And I'll be in a new line. And rmrf var cache apk star like so so don't worry about these two commands they're effectively just the commands we need in order to add bash and curl to our alpine image now the next thing i want to do is define our workspace our work there i should say and this should be at the same level and i want this to equal workspace just so that we've got a nice separated directory in which we can run our action Next, I want to copy the contents of the current directory to this new workspace um, work directory. And then finally, I want to specify the entry point for our GitHub action. So entry point, and this is gonna be the path to the executable that we wish to run within our action. So workspace slash, and I'm gonna call this entry point dot sh, and it's this that we're gonna be defining in just a moment. Cool, so let's define this entry point.sh now. So entry point.sh. This is going to have bin bash shebang. So bin bash, like so. I want to set EUOX pipe fail. So if anything within the action fails, the entire command's gonna fail. And we're also setting things like the X flag in order to highlight all of the steps that we're running through. Now to start off, I'm just going to say a simple hello world. So at this point, we have just about everything we need in order for our GitHub action to be run. But how do we go about testing it? So one approach that we can do is we can actually define a workflow within our own repository that will reference this action. So let's do that now. 
So the first thing we're going to do is create a new dot github slash github slash workflows directory. And then within this, we can do um, test.yaml like so. So let's define our workflow to test this now. So I'm going to give it a name of test. I'm going to say on push to branches. And we're going to use YouTube because that is the branch that we're currently on. And then I'm going to define the jobs I want this to run. So the test usage job. And this is going to run on Ubuntu 20.04. And then let's define the steps we want this job to run through. So name, create file. This is going to run. Hello world. And it's going to append this directly into temp.txt like so. Now effectively, this is the representation of a step within somebody else's pipeline where they build a deployment artifact, such as the CLI or the Docker file. This will then get passed into our own GitHub action, which we will then proceed to notarize. Now, the next step we need to define is the step that's going to utilize our action. So I'm going to call this notarize file. This is going to use or uses the Elliot Forbes slash VCN notarization action. And we're going to specify the branch name. So at YouTube. And then we're going to pass in the inputs to this action. So VCN username. And we'll say username for now. VCN password is password. And the file that we wish to pass in is going to be this temp dot txt file that we've created in the above step. Cool. So let's go ahead and get add get commit. We'll say initial commit get push and this will push all of our new github action code up to the repository. Cool. So if we then open up our github repository and navigate to the actions tab we should be able to click on the latest one, which gives us the output from our test usage pipeline. You can see that this is coming off in the YouTube branch and you can see the status and how long it took. So if we go into this test usage, we can open up each of these steps within the job that we defined. And you can see that it's successfully created the temp.txt file. And we've also been able to echo out hello world. Now, if we want to start testing and iterating on this, we can navigate into our action and we can start doing things like ls pwd to start seeing what's contained within the container in which our action is running. And I'm going to get add, get commit and updates just for now. I know somebody's going to be complaining about my use of the comments, but who cares? And let's go back, click on the actions tab and click on the latest one. And we can start to see the output from this as well. And if everything has gone correctly or successfully, then we should see in the ls command our temp.txt. As you can see after our ls temp.txt. So it's been successfully passed from this create file step into the notarize file step. And if we now want to verify the environment variables that we passed in to the action, if you remember, we did we defined them within the action.yaml file here, and they're mapped via the inputs. And subsequently passed in here, we can then go into the entry point.yaml and echo these out. So VCN user and VCN password. And then when this runs, it should substitute VCN user for username and VCN password for password. So let's save that, git add dash a, git commit environment variables, and git push origin YouTube. Cool. As you can see, that's triggered the action now. Go into test usage. And let's watch the output of this test usage. 
pipeline. As you can see, it's running the build commands for our action Docker file. It's ran the create file and it has now successfully substituted in the environment variables. So we're seeing echo username and echo password as we expected. Cool. So we said we wanted to notarize a file that was been passed into this action. So let's update the entry point.sh now to perform that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a setup function that's going to download the VCN command line tool. And don't worry about this code for now. I'm going to leave a link to where you can find this code in the description below. Cool. So the next thing we need to do is to create a main function. And within this function, we want to first log in. So I'm going to do echo TMP VCN login. And this is going to pick up the underlying environment variables present within our action. And then finally, we want to do TPN or TMP VCN notarize. We want it to be public. And we're going to use dollar sign one to represent the file. Now, finally, underneath, we want to call the setup function and then call the main function, passing in the file path argument like so. The next thing we need to do is pass in the proper usernames and passwords. And we can do that using the secrets dot BCN user. And let me just double check. So we can see these things in settings, secrets, and we can input them in as a repository secret. So I've, I've entered this as a VCN username. And then I want to do the same for secrets.vcn pass, like so. And that's all there is to it. This should now pick up the repository secrets that I've already inputted into my repository and substitute in the proper credentials for connecting to VCN into this action. So we can now test this in a secure manner. We are no longer echoing these out. So just double check that you're not echoing these out. And let's do the following. So get add, get commit, testing, notarization, get push, origin, YouTube. And then let's, let's navigate into our GitHub action. So actions, test usage, you can see that it's starting to run through it. And you can see that it's successfully connecting to the VCN code notary service and notarizing our temp.txt file, which we passed in as an argument. Perfect, perfect. So we now have a fully working and tested GitHub action. And we can now then publish that to the GitHub marketplace by navigating to the repository homepage. And you should be able to see at the top that there should be a publish to marketplace button here in place of view on marketplace because I've already published this. You click on that, you define the version and the tag name, and then you click publish. And then you should be able to see this live for other people to now consume. Cool. So in this video, we have effectively started from scratch and built up a fully functioning GitHub action, which we've then tested and published to the marketplace. Now that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. Before we go, I would just like to say a big thanks to Code Notary for sponsoring this video. And if you enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.